Hello and welcome to this uh, short video uh, where I'll be doing a demo of uh, EasyDMark, uh, its reporting and uh, some of its features that we provide. Uh, now, uh, when a user signs up on our system, we essentially let him add the domain that he wants to uh, deploy DMARC on, and we provide uh, the user a DMARC record that needs to be added in the DNS zone. Uh, of that specific domain. Uh, that is a TXT record, and once it's added, uh, within a day or two, we're going to start collecting these uh, DMARC aggregate reports. And those reports will be parsed into four different sections in here, which we'll be going over and uh, essentially give you an overview of what sources are being used to outsend emails from your organization's domain. Um, Okay, so four different sections, essentially, first one being the DMARC compliance section, where we can find all the legitimate sources. Uh, these have been verified by your organization that they are legitimate and configured already to be compliant with DMARC. Now, uh, we only need either SPF or DKIM for a source to become DMARC compliant, but it, it is the best practice and the best approach to configure both SPF and DKIM if we have uh, the ability to do it. Um, in this a specific example that we can see that we have a source in here, which is the Amazon SES source. It's only configured to, to be uh, compliant with DMARC with only DKIM passing, but uh, these other sources are passing fully as in SPF and DKIM as well. Now, if, you, if we expand this uh, Amazon SES section in here, uh, we can see the detailed results uh, of these emails. Um, and we can see that both of these are essentially passing the validation point where SPF is uh, essentially passing by whitelisting the IP addresses and DKIM is validating those public and private keys. Uh, but we also need uh, them to align as and we need your own domain to sign these outgoing emails. Uh, and that's the case here for DKIM. And we can see that in here where it, it is exactly matching uh, the domain, the outstanding domain, and uh, but for SPF we can see that it's Amazon SES, so it's unaligned. Um, also, uh, going into the non-compliant section, uh, this is this is where we'll see uh, where our system will detect legitimate sources, as in known sources. Um, for example, again, Amazon SES. These are most likely bounces. Uh, Tipaldi, Mimecast, and so on. And we actually provide the user uh, the guidance to configure the SPF and the DKIM with these small gear icons in here. And now uh, the main thing that the user needs to do uh, since he is on the non-DMARC policy, which is the monitoring, is essentially uh, verify all the legitimate sources and get them under DMARC compliant so we can initiate the enforcement process. Now, once we have done that, as in configure SPF DKIM for these sources, for all the legitimate ones, uh, we can see them under D DMARC compliant. And once we verified that nothing legitimate is remaining in here, other than some bounces and sort of stuff, um, we essentially start with what what's called the enforcement process. Now, DMARC has three policies, First one being none, which is again the monitoring where uh, you're monitoring everything. When you're not enforcing any policies, you're not telling DMARC to do anything with these non-compliant emails. But once we start with the enforcement, we have the quarantine policy where quarantine essentially sends those non-compliant and threat emails into the spam box of the users. And we, the last policy that we have is reject, where uh, DMARC essentially rejects the non-compliant emails. Uh, so again, getting everything from uh, under non-compliant that is legitimate under DMARC compliant is the first goal. So we can start with the enforcement process and get all these uh, non-compliant emails. And again, phishing attacks, which we can find under the threat and unknown section to be rejected and essentially lock down the domain from preaching attacks and abuses. Now, uh, the last tab that we have here uh, will be the forwarded tab, uh, which essentially DMARC detects when an email is auto-forwarded, as in uh, those emails were sent originally to a recipient and that recipient forwarded it to another email address. 
the mark detects that and uh, in the case of legitimate emails uh, it will downgrade the policy one stage as in if you were on quarantine it will downgrade it to none as in the email will reach the inbox um, we also have what we, what's called the failure reports or forensic reports um, they are not that common uh, most isps don't support it major isps google yahoo and so on they don't support it so only a couple of them will show up there are rare cases but uh, it essentially gives you the ability to see some more uh, private data in here for example the sender ip and the subject of the email um, moving on to the uh, easy spf feature that we provide easy spf is essentially a tool that will reduce the DNS lookup limit that your SPF record has. So uh, SPF record has a limitation of 10 DNS lookup. And once that's exceeded, you're, we're gonna start seeing failures causing uh, because of that. And easy SPF takes care of that. It essentially flattens those uh, IP addresses, it includes into IP addresses and rotates them in the back end, back end every 15, 20 minutes. So you, you won't end up with dead IP addresses as well and uh, essentially gives you the ability to add as much as includes uh, as you like. Um, hosted DMARC is a kind of a new feature that we released. It essentially, well, the DMARC record is just a TXT record in the DNS zone. And uh, when you're in the configuration and the enforcement process, you're gonna, you're gonna have to edit that record a lot. So hosted DMARC is essentially uh, it, it makes that whole process easier for you. Uh, you only need to add a single uh, CNAME record. And uh, essentially, it, it gives you a GUI here that you can manage the, the record in here, where there it's advancing the policy, adding some new uh, reporting addresses, um, changing the percentage of the policy, which is an option as well, and so on. Um, hosted BME. Uh, essentially, hosted BME is um, it lets you upload the logo and the certificate uh, to uh, to our servers and manages everything from this. Kind of like hosted DMARC uh, gives you a GUI to manage everything. Um, so yeah, next is the reputation monitoring, which uh, lets you add IP addresses uh, and even domains, and it will constantly. Uh, monitor them for you and let you know if they get blacklisted anywhere. Uh, next up would be the email investigation tool, uh, which um, lets you send out a test email when you when you're in the configuration process and you've just configured the source. Uh, you don't have to wait up to a day to receive those remark re aggregate reports because they do take uh, 24 hours to come in. So you can test send a test uh, email to the email investigation tool here and it will show up the result like this and let you know if they if, if it got configured correctly or not and uh, even redirect it to the official guides to configure them um lastly i do want to go over the users and access uh features that we provide we essentially give you the um ability to invite add users and give them specific permissions uh, to a domain, whether it's just only to view the reports, uh, to monitor them, or even uh, admin accesses for uh, editing easy SPF and so on. And lastly, we uh, do have alertings uh, as well, where you can set up alerts. Um, to, for example, you can set up an alert uh, to receive an email if one of your domains are is getting fished uh more than 10 times a day and so on um last thing before we end the video i want to mention um that mtss and tls reportings we do have lookup tools for them where you can lo look up and generate the records but uh tls reporting is coming soon so that's something to keep in mind all right thank you